Well, good morning, traders. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. We're going to start off by looking at the news coming up this week. There's not an awful lot. There were a few things here and there, but I'm going to focus again on the U.S. news. And the interesting thing on Thursday uh, is jobless claims, as usual. Um, initial and continuing jobless claims. We'll keep an eye on that because that's an ever hot topic. And then a little bit later on, on the same day, on Thursday this coming week, we have new home sales, and um, that'll be an inter interesting one, because if you have a look at the charts on new home sales, um, we kind of had a support level here, just around, I don't know, s s half a million new home sales, um, and right at support, and kind of in the middle of the range after the 2008 debacle and all that sort of thing. Um, but in the middle of the range, not too bad. Whether we'll drop below the the six, 0.6 million level and start to head a lot lower will be interesting because the housing sector is so crucial in the U.S. economy. With about 12% of um, the economy somehow connected to the, um, the mortgage and housing and renovation and uh, estate agent business and all that sort of thing. And that's a big indicator on what's going on in the economy. And then also, very importantly, on the same day, we have um, the Malawian interest rate decision. That's bound to have uh, very important repercussions for the global economy. Right, now that we've done all that, let's go and have a look at the charts. So we've got the majors up here. I don't want to spend too much time. Actually, I'm not going to be taking many trades, if any, until the New York session opens later on today. So um, this is all just having a look. Um, and really all eyes are gonna be on the dollar index and on the stock markets. Uh, those are the two key things uh, to look at. And we'll talk about the stock markets shortly, but let's just have a look at the dollar index. Then we'll look at the majors and the currencies. And this is gonna be a really short report today. Dollar index actually gapped down a wee bit over the weekend back down towards that support level uh, formed that by that spike, uh, spike low last week, that doji candle. And you can see we're trying to form a sort of a head and shoulders bottom here on the daily chart. And it's perhaps better seen on the, hour, on the four hour chart. And you can see this sort of attempt at a four hour chart head and shoulders. So we've got the sort of left hand shoulder coming here. Uh, and then the head there where the spike is. And then the right hand shoulder, which we're busy trying to form. And unfortunately, we did gap down below that green line, which I've been talking about for a long time. That's a very crucial support. The fact that we've got a gap down means we've probably got to fill that gap. And so we'll see if we can get up above there. But later on today, I don't know. I'm going to be waiting for the New York session or just before the New York session to make any further decisions. And I think that's about it, really. Um, there's not much else to say apart from the fact that there is a little gap up above us above this red line at about 103 there's a little tiny gap there which is kind of unfilled so far and uh, it's hard to see really and it's not that noticeable but it is there and that gap there is about the same as this gap here that one hasn't been filled and the one that we formed over the weekend might have to be filled as well so there is a chance not that I place a huge amount of emphasis on gaps, but this gap is very similar to the one we've just seen at support, which was support. And you can see we gapped below support on that occasion. And here we just gap below support. And very often the dollar index will want to come back. In fact, there are a number of gaps that we've left behind. There's one over here as well. That's pretty obvious. So we've, and that one's at about 106. So we've got one, two, three gaps on this chart which have not been addressed yet. And let's wait and see. So I think the best option here is to just wait and see what happens until New York starts. Having said that, um, let's just look at the euro and the pound. The euro is interesting because um, we have just poked above that spike high, barely. Um, we actually poked above it. We haven't closed above it. In fact, we've fallen, this is the day chart, we've fallen back down. And we've now, instead of this sort of expanding pattern, although it still remains in play, actually, if you draw uh, an expanding pattern like this, if I just move these channel lines around, you can see that expanding pattern 
kind of is still there and it's still valid. Depends on the way you draw these things. Of course, it's like statistics. You can draw things any way you want. So we've still got that expanding pattern, but that's not what I want to focus on on this chart. This is the euro US dollar. Um, uh, daily chart. So w what we want to do is just zoom in a little bit and go to the four hour chart and you can see that's a quite a beautiful uh, rising channel and two things I want to point out here. Not only is this a, a sort of an upward channel, it's also a potential head and shoulders pattern. So we've got the sort of head here, we've got the left hand shoulder and maybe a right hand shoulder if we don't reach this channel line and break above the head or close above the head at least. So that's potentially a pattern there. What's interesting about quick uh, lesson children uh, for drawing these lines, you can see I've drawn this top channel line by cutting off the wicks of two candles over here. And uh, people often say, well, why? when do you cut the wicks off? When do you leave them on? Um, what's the deal with that? And the simple rule of thumb is just move the, the line to where it touches the most points. So if I put it at the very top, of this uh, this wick here it's only touching one wick I could move it slightly down and shave off the top of that first wick a little bit just a fraction to include essentially two wicks there but I'm not touching any of these but if I move this down just one little bit more to this level I can then um, I can either just work on the bodies the real bodies of one two three four call it five candles or I could just have it a fraction higher and carry um, and touch those two wicks there and this wick here and just about touching the real bodies of these candles so it makes sense not to use the very top wick in this case move it down a little bit try and be as inclusive as possible and get as many of these puppies into the picture and I would say right there is perfect we're touching the real bodies of these two candles very close to the wick we're touching um, the top wick of this candle and very close to the bodies of that one so that's just a little way to kind of move your lines around if you want to be a little bit more accurate so that's the euro let's see what happens when we if the for the, the last eight hours we've just been stuck we had a, a surge up uh, at the open of play and then nothing so two hours of doing nothing and if anything uh, a couple of doji candles so we've got a one up one down potential little spike high tiny spike high doji tiny spike low doji very hesitant not a lot of impetus to go higher on the euro same thing on the pound well we've just reached this is the day back to the day chart on the pound we've reached this uh, top that we've been talking about for a while we did lose a, a small trade on this we got stopped out of break even on the euro and the euro cad but we lost a little bit a uh, very small amount on the pound uh, with this move up but look what's happened here we've just touched this once again here's a good in, uh, interesting thing on on uh, drawing these lines if I go to the top there and this one really doesn't matter you can touch the two wicks of those two candles but if I pull it down a bit you can touch the real body of the central candle and the top wick of that candle so you could draw this line any way you want but if you look to the right there's another wick there so let's include that one and let's have it like that so that looks about right and then you can see we just spiked up there. Remember, this is a day chart. If we look at the four hour chart, it'll be a bit different. Spiked up there, just poked through, made a fractionally higher high, but not much. And then we're, we were immediately rejected down from there. If we have a look at the four hour chart on the pound, you can see we've got this four hour reverse, reversal candle. Not quite a dark cloud cover, but similar. Uh, this is an engulfing candle uh, over here. A dark cloud cover needs to get at least halfway down through the preceding candle. Um, let's see if we get any quick examples over here. Uh, no, well, there's a there's a uh, the opposite of a dark cloud cover. That's a piercing pattern where we um, open lower and then get at least halfway up the preceding candle. This one that we've got here, um, we open fractionally higher, spiked high. But we didn't close more than halfway down through this candle so it's not quite a dark cloud cover but it is a bearish candle off off this uh resistance line and we'll have to see what happens with the pound so i think with all of these majors just best to wait and see uh considering that the uh the, the dollar index has 
broken support, uh, but it's gapped down. We've now got three gaps in a, in a fairly short number of days. There's the one from last night. There's one over there, and there was one before that I showed you. I think we've got to wait and see how these play out. So I'm not going to do much until the U.S. session begins. Uh, yen pairs, once again, uh, very briefly, we've got the dollar yen making support there. Have a look at Friday's video. Nothing's changed. We've got dollar yen um, moving up. Um, so I think we want to try and get, we want to try and buy the dollar yen. We've got the Australian dollar yen moving up and we've got the CAD yen. We took profit on the dollar yen and the CAD yen on Friday by buying these at the bottoms. Uh, we got out of those trades. We're still in the Australian dollar yen and we'll have to see what happens at this trend line. But for now, there's not an awful lot to do on those pairs. And as for the other yen pairs, I'm not too worried. But when it comes to metals, gold and silver, well, gold's just trying again to, to make a top. So this is a day chart on gold. Hasn't moved uh, in the last couple of days. Friday formed a, a potential reversal candle, more of a hesitation really. Today we just tested the same highs and have moved back down again. If you want to be trading gold, I think it's got to be short um, simply because we can't go long at these heights and we are due for a retracement now on the four hour chart. We've got this um, definitely a bearish engulfing candle in this case. And at the close of this four hour candle, it might be worthwhile having a go to trade gold short for a target of 1820 or 1800 all the way down here at this pink line that's where i want to start buying gold whether we'll get all the way down there or not i don't know so watch this four hour close very carefully that's going to be an interesting one if you're looking to trade gold today um quite honestly i'm just uh, i'm prepared to wait these out silver and all the rest i don't want to have much to say about although i do want to talk about natural gas because this is a really interesting pattern you know we're long on natural gas from 3.43 and uh, we broke support on Friday and on Thursday, got through that green line. But look what happened over the weekend. Natural gas, I'm going to do a short video on this just now uh, for the natural gas followers. A big gap up over the weekend, leaving behind the sole here. Uh, we might have to fill that gap, but it's a very bullish sign leaving a stranded reversal candle behind. This is a hammer or an inverse hammer candle. It's left it behind. Uh, it's gapped up mercilessly. And uh, we might have to just um, backtrace into that gap a little bit. But for now, it looks like we've got a potential reversal on natural gas. First target 4.7. And then we'll be looking up into these moving averages. Uh, I'll do a more detailed video on that later on today. Watch out for that if you're a natural gas trader. Uh, we're short on sugar. Nothing's really changed. Just faffing around. We'll have to wait and see. It's possible we might get back into this range here on sugar, into that, um, I'd say, slightly vomit-colored range over there. We might have to get back into there. This left-hand shoulder on sugar didn't quite make a uh, what we'd hoped for, I, I suppose, in terms of an equi patterned uh, or equi distant uh, right hand shoulder compared to the left hand shoulder we did get up to that zone but not right into the middle of it we might have to retest that still but we're short sugar and um, here's our, our deal on sugar let's see if we can reset this price scale and that's what we're looking at we want to move down into some of these levels the price of sugar is really high we've got supply coming from india and brazil extra uh, supply coming up this year and um, generally it's just too expensive so that's a good one. And then soya beans, we haven't had a chance to sell this, but you know the strategy on soya. We want to be selling in this salmon pink orange colored region. Um, this line, this channel, ascending channel, it's kind of bearish really. I hope we do get up there. It doesn't look like we will at this stage, but we might just get a blow off top into there. That'll be the time to sell soya beans. And that's the update for today. So it's all about natural gas making quite a, a startling uh, turnabout there with a big gap. Uh, we've got the dollar index gapping down. Are we going to fill that gap and hold this support eventually, break up above and move higher? And then we've got the euro at the top of the channel and the pound looking like it's trying to form a double top here on the four hour and the daily chart. So 
Um, probably the best thing is to just wait until the New York session starts. There's no rush to get into any of these trades. If these are going to be reversals, we'll find out as the day progresses and we'll have plenty of chance to get into the direction that we want either later today or tomorrow. So we don't need to rush on these. Uh, the same applies to the CAD pairs. We haven't talked about those, but um, I still kind of like um, the CAD pairs. If you look at the Euro CAD, uh, I really like this last uh, pattern on Friday. Big bearish engulfing candle. Beautiful. If that's not a reversal candle, then I don't know what is. We've got back up to the top of that candle. Might be worthwhile trying another short here. So we'll have to wait and see how all this goes. Um, probably this morning, Monday morning in London, it's a decent day to take the day off and go to the beach if you're in Africa or in uh, Australia or in um, Brazil or somewhere like that and perhaps go for a, uh, a ski on the pond if you're in North America, although the weather's hot, pretty hot at the moment. Take care. Well, after going through all of that, I almost forgot the stocks and, uh, well... <laughs> I think a lot of people are interested in what's happening with the stock market. So let's just spend two minutes on this. NASDAQ and S&P. Let's forget about the rest for now. We've got Apple and Amazon and all sorts of things and US 30 over here. But they're still at very key levels. I think that um, uh, let's just focus on the S&P. I think that uh, yesterday's candle, this one here, Friday's should I say, was a shaven head candle up into the 61 point. 0.8% retracement of this level, of this move down. We can just draw that in there very quickly. So if we draw a fib from there to there, um, we got about 61.8% of the way up into this into this move down. And we've still got all this overhead resistance, all the resistance in the world above us, which is just crying out to be broken and uh, to trap all the bears. I'm not sure if there are many left, actually. Uh, it looks to me like there's been a lot of... Uh, loss of interest in selling or buying but if anything we've got all sorts of sorts of options now positioned um, above here of course and below this support so um, I'm not sure what the ratios are between puts and calls and options and how much is expiring when and all that sort of thing but it's going to play a big role um, I think if anything if you want to be trading stocks today let's go short um, and once again we've got, we might not now be on level six of this bluff because um, we've been pandering around this, this area for so long and there are all sorts of people thinking it might be long, it might be short, we're going to break through, we're not going to break through, we're going to trap the bears, we're going to pick up liquidity, all these terms being flung around. Um, uh, reload shorts, reload longs, fresh shorts. Fresh, don't worry about all of that. Actually, what's good about this setup is you can trade it with quite a tight stop loss. So we could go short here. We know where our stop loss has got to be pretty much the same as where the options players will be playing it. Uh, stop losses above these highs. And if we do get a blowout and up up and up through these resistance areas, well, there's quite a long way up to go before we get any serious challenge to a fresh rally. It could be as high as uh, 4,100, could be as high as 4,200 or 40, even 4,300. So we, if we're going to be trading the short, we want to be out of those shorts super quick. Uh, and wait to see what happens. If we do get a blow off, it'll be easily spotted because we'll get a big whip candle, a big spike high, a big reversal. Something will happen. We'll be, get a big gap one way or the other. And uh, we'll know that um, that the market has changed direction. For now, it's all pretty placid. Volatility is low. VIX is low. Nothing's really happening. Um, uh, I expect this move, next, the next move is going to be a big one. And it's probably going to be this week. And we'll have to wait and see. If anything, I'm short once again on S&P and on NASDAQ and we'll look to play that into the New York session today.